leaf news because we can't get away from the leaves. Oh, we, we can't have a podcast without talking about my maple leaves. No. Maple lab. We already talked about your Habs, so. Yeah, well, they, they have a little <laughs> bit here, too. <laughs> the leaves beat the Habs uh, for their 100th point of the year. Mm-hmm. Get two points for that game and a 3-2 victory. Yes. And they clinch a playoff spot. Yes, they do. For the, hold on, let me think here, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, for the sixth year in a row. Nice. <laughs> yes. That's, Congratulations, uh, it's... Congratulations, Steve. Thank you. Um, I, it was expected. Um, obviously, we all know where the Leafs' real problems are in. I think I've mentioned it at least once an episode. Yeah, the playoff spot. Yep, it's all about round one. It's all about the postseason. Yeah. So if they can win four games, at least four games, then I think everyone will be happy. Like all, then the the talk will just end about this first round. Oh, can't get by the first round. It's a barrier. It's a wall that they can't climb over. I just want it to end, man. I'm just sick and tired of turning on the TV, and that's all they talk about when they talk about the Leafs. Like I want them, I want them to move on. I want them to do this so that they can free us all. Free us all, hockey gods, please. Yes, yes, please. Even like you're probably sick and tired of hearing it too. I bet. Or do you? Or are you loving it? You're I, probably one. I you, like, you I like seeing it. crazy people be crazy. I like seeing yeah, yeah. Leaf fans go crazy. <laughs> it's something that. Of course, you you love chaos. <laughs> I love seeing, when Steve Dangle comes on, has his HF or his LFR HFR. Uh, he has his LFR video. Yeah, especially after a bad game, I always go watch it. I always have. Oh to yeah, it. dude. The, Every the, single time. Oh, the bad ones are like probably my favorite ones to watch, just because it's like it's very raw emotion from him, especially the playoffs is when it's at the best, and then I win the first round. And I get to see Steve Dangle get mad. That's that's a win situation <laughs> right there. I can't go wrong with that. I would look even if the Leafs pass the first round. I if they don't, then I still have a good treat out of Steve Dangle. It's a good point. You're not wrong. Plus, last year too, you even had the bonus of him watching Habs games for the rest of the playoffs. So he was yeah. just he was just all Habs after that. I think he did take a break for Winnipeg. Yeah, yeah, they started it against Vegas. Um, Vegas because, well, midway through Winnipeg. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, it was one of those things, but yeah. Nonetheless, talking about him, it's gonna have something to do with the ne- next segment. Talking about the Leafs, Matthew scoring 50 goals in his last 50 games. 51 in his last 50, actually. Sorry, yeah, he, scored, right. he scored two he in the game. <laughs> in the last 50 games. Now, mind you last the last 50 games so it's not the start of the year to now nope. no no one no one's saying that no it's his last 50 games yes now uh should we should i show him the clip steven if you want is it gonna get like copyright striked or something or copyright strike me all you want steven. <laughs> i don't care and i want to it's steve dangle ladies and gentlemen we're gonna be showing yeah. you guys a clip from him he went absolutely mad uh, about this game uh, there you go matt i think he <laughs> even made a cool. short yeah he made a short about it too <laughs> oh lord you know they win a pretty convincing game it was three three to two they sealed it i think in the second period right Tavares is getting his third goal yes the third, yeah sorry the third goal of the game there and then i don't know if they the hab scored in that period or the the third um, I'm checking right now. I believe the, yeah, no, the, the Leafs just shut it down in the third. It was a zero, zero third period. So that's, that's a hell of a game. That's, that's what you want to see. Like, or that's what, not you, but that's what I want to see and what other Leaf fans want to see, right? They want to be able to hang on to the lead and just shut it down and, you know, not like just Bro, play playoff hockey. Was- and the Habs are going to play playoff. Sorry, I keep, I keep going. You can play, play the video. I didn't mean to play. It just... <laughs> oh, okay. It just okay. Played. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's like the type of hockey you want to see the Leafs play at this point of the season, especially against a team like the Habs who just, they just want to play spoiler and, you know, prevent the Leafs from clinching when they can. And um, yeah, just beat the Leafs because it feels rivalry. good. It's it feels good to beat your rival. Yeah, exactly. So... Yeah, no, that was really good to see the Leafs just hang on, shut her down. Shelgren played great. Um, no complaints from his side. He made big saves when he needed to. 
you think it'd be and, a different result if Jake Allen stayed in the game because he did get injured during the course of the game? Yeah, it was that. Yeah, obviously that that did suck for them. Obviously for Montembeau to go in right away and like one of the first shots he sees is a, yeah. a goal against, so it didn't help. No. Uh, yeah, if Allen stays in that game, who knows? Could be completely different. Could have been two two going to overtime. We don't know. Right. We don't know. It could have been could have been five two Leafs win. Like Matthews could have hit 60 goals in that game. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Yeah. But yeah, it the should have what it could have is one thing, but we can only take what happened in real life. And yeah. OK, OK, OK. You're okay. going to make me cry. <laughs> Let's go look at what Steve Dangle has to say. But the 50 and 50. Let's go. Bro, let's say you signed up for Twitter 72 days ago, okay? And over those 72 days, you've sent 58 unhinged tweets. However, over the last 50 days, you've sent 50 unhinged tweets. There's information. I've given you information. All right, now let me ask you a question based on that information. Over the last 50 days... How many unhinged <laughs> tweets have you sent? Do you realize Austin Matthews has 50 goals? Well, actually, he has 51. Austin Matthews has 51 goals over his last 50 games, whether you fill your diaper or not. This isn't a matter of opinion. When did everything become a matter of opinion? I will end this calmly by saying it is my opinion that scoring 50 goals in 50 games means you have 50 goals in 50 games. Oh, shit. Well, that's it for that clip. Mm-hmm. Now I'm stuck in this. I wanted to see the comments, see what uh, people were saying about it. Um, because there is a little debacle on Twitter. You read about this, and people are a little conflicted about it. But, like, what's there to be conflicted about? Like, if it's just, like, I obviously... see the comments so I can show you what i'm yeah, talking about because like obviously i i don't i don't know what the issue is here like no one's saying he scored 50 in 50 to start the season no one's saying that <laughs> so the fact like i didn't even know about this so you brought it up to me yesterday when you asked me like hey did you see him like freak out in his video about the 50 and 50 thing and i was like what? like what are you talking about then you explained it obviously and now our viewers just watch it too with us so yeah, I I don't know. I, really I did that. wouldn't I really... pay attention to those people saying that. Obviously, it struck a nerve with Steve. Oh yeah, big nerve. Um, but yeah, like I, I don't know. I mean, I I feel like if that's me, if I see that, I'm just ignoring it and I'm just dealing with the people who know what they're talking about because those are the people I want to have conversations with. I don't want to deal with the people on Twitter who are just there to trying like they're just provoking him, right? They're just trying to get a reaction out of him and. He's kind of giving into it. Maybe that's also kind of his character. He does get See? provoked very easily. So, you know, it's hard to blame the guy for that. But, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I just don't know what the confusion... I don't know why this is such a big deal. I don't even know why it's a talking point, to be honest. It's it's easy. He scored 51 goals in his last 50 games. I I I, pers- I agree with you and Steve Dangle. I just- You're not even agreeing with me. You're just agreeing with the facts. <laughs> That's You're agreeing with statistics. Really... <laughs> and all the other guys are just trying to get a... Yeah, they're just trying to piss him off. Yeah, they're just right. trying to piss him off because they like seeing... Like you said, you like to see Steve Dangle when the team, when the Leafs lose in the playoffs because it's fun to see him get upset. Yes. That's what these people are doing. They're getting him upset because they like to see him upset. And it is pretty funny to see him upset. I'll even admit as a Leafs <laughs> fan, I, I love his pissed off videos because it's just like... It's I don't know, I guess... The way I view things with the Leafs, at least, like I even like you can actually ask some of my friends. They say like I'm a more like I look at the Leafs from a more like level perspective. Like when they were bad, I knew they were bad. And I wasn't saying like, oh, they're going to make the playoffs this year and all that stuff. I was like, they got a bad team. We'll be lucky to be like outside the top, the bottom five this year. <laughs> like I, I was admitting that. Right. So I don't know. I mean. I feel like with him though, he's very passionate about the team. Clearly, it's 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 his job. He's made it his job to cover the team. So good for him for doing what he's passionate about. Fifteen seasons. Yeah, yeah, I know it's crazy too when you look at it. Like it started in 08, or the 07, 08 season. I think was his first one, or 08, 09, one of those. He was doing these videos during the Reimer Boston 
playoffs. Dude, even before that, he like the first season he would have done it, like Toscolo would have still been a goalie on the Leafs. Jesus. Yeah, that's how long ago this is. Maybe maybe even Raycroft like would have been like his last year with the team. I don't know. Um he's, I think he's a veteran Osa- himself. He is a veteran. Yeah, oh yeah. He's he's been around the like think about it, dude. He was on YouTube like shortly after it became a thing. Like wow. It, w- it would have been like what five years after YouTube was just created? Like YouTube was what, two thousand four, I think? Now you're going into territory which I don't know. <laughs> okay, <so>. well <laughs> you don't have to I guess yeah, you're searching it up. Um I think it was two thousand four. Two thousand five. 2005, 2005 okay close enough February 14th four days yeah. before my birthday oh wow hey, did you look at well it was on valentine's oh, day so what a day to release. very lovely yes <laughs> wow full of love and greed um <laughs> any other news from the leaf game that perhaps or the mm, in general well yeah there's um just some news actually i saw right before we uh, started recording here um some news out of leafs land uh, Muzzin will be out against the Sabres tomorrow night. Uh, that is Tuesday, April the 12th. Okay. Uh, it's an undisclosed injury. Apparently it has nothing to do with the, con- the concussion that kept him out for two months before this. So let's hope everything's okay. Just not 100%. So let's hope it's just something he tweaked maybe in the game against Montreal and he just needs to sit out for a bit and so take a rest. Supposedly him and Campbell are less than 100%. Campbell as well, eh? I didn't see we'll have the start versus Walgren, sorry. Well, again, I mean, that's fine. Again, the Leafs, they've clinched, so you got nothing to worry about. Oh, you are jockeying for position. Like, right now, they are sitting in second in the division. Uh, four points up on Tampa, so you do have that buffer space. Okay. Um, but again, though, you don't want to be too comfortable. But yeah, they're, they're in a good position. They can afford to sit Campbell one game if he's not feeling great. Shelgren's been playing great as well. We haven't seen Shelgren play against the Sabres either. So, you know, maybe just a different goalie being in net against this team can help them win. Actually, they the only win that they've had against Buffalo this season was with Joseph Wall in net. And that was back in November or December. So the, the odds might be for you in this game. Yeah, exactly, man. I'm, man, I'm not sure they already are. Yeah, yeah, they should be. Oh, yeah. The, way, they really are, but... People look at these games like, okay, there's a 50-50 chance they blow it. Oh, there, there's always a 50-50 chance when the Leafs are skating. Yeah, it really <laughs> is. They've been putting their odds in their favor this year and um, excited to see what happens in the playoffs. Is there one more thing you want to talk about? Yeah, so another uh, news on the injury front. Um, this one, now it was announced that he was going to be out. Uh, I remember at trade deadline when Sandine was... Uh, out. They also announced Andre Kasha would be out. Uh, but now more news today because I have been wondering too, just like what's his status? Like, and when's he going to be back? How's he doing? Well, apparently he's still not good. Still got. He's been diagnosed with a concussion, so they officially know what it is. Which I kind of always figured it was that, and he's out indefinitely. So that really sucked because he's a guy. Like when he's in the lineup, he just he works so hard. He plays every shift like it's going to be his last shift, which is a great thing, but I think that's also where that might be what's causing him so many injuries. He's playing too hard and he puts himself in these situations that like he doesn't want to be in or he puts himself in spots where he's just vulnerable because he's not really paying attention to the play a hundred percent. But yeah, it, it does suck because he's a guy, like I said, when he's playing, he he plays every shift like it's his last shift and he just oh. he, he looks great. Yeah, that one it, that wasn't even Duchesne's fault, man. Like he kind of just he just skated into him. He he didn't see him. He didn't look up. Uh, yeah. So it, it was very unfortunate. And like he had multiple ones of that too. I remember there was a game against Calgary where like Zadorov hit him in the head. Um, like and just like another one where like a clean hit. Just he he just doesn't see the guy coming. So it doesn't even seem that hard of a hit though. It. Well, it really doesn't. I, I, yeah, it's weird. It's so weird because, like, especially in that case, I forgot that. Yeah, Duchesne, it was like a reverse check. Like, Duchesne just kind of was shielding the puck. and Of sorts, like, yeah. It just feels like a little bump. Yeah, it, it, it's like I said. He just ran into his elbow. Like, yeah, it, it's, not even, it's not even Duchesne elbowing him. It's just Kasha running into Duchesne's elbow. So, yeah. 
Ah, uh, yeah. I, it sucks. I I hope he comes back. I mean, again, this is just one of those things. He's out indefinitely now. So if the Leafs want him back in the lineup, they got to win some rounds and play long enough for him to come back in line. Like, imagine the Leafs win round one, and then like maybe like they're in round two against like Florida or something like that, and like it's game five. They're... I don't think I have that much imagination, Nick. I can't. I, sorry, <laughs> I, can't, stretch, I can't stretch that. Okay, yeah, maybe. Yeah, uh, you you bring up a point. Yeah, I guess That's a lot of but, imagination. <laughs> either way, though, you know what I'm trying to say, though, right? Where like you get a guy like that back like later in the playoffs, and he's like, it's like he's ready to go. He hasn't played in the playoffs yet. It kind of adds like this guy back into the lineup. Everyone feels better because now it's like you got this. Because especially he hasn't gotten time to warm up. He didn't play any regular season games until that point. He's going to have, it's going to be a little speed bump. His first game won't be perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, his second game will be definitely better. Or just a continuation of him not meshing well into the playoffs. There's there's a chance that that happens as well. Yeah. Either way, Lil, that's just, I'm hoping it's not that long. Yeah. Again, like the playoffs are going to start probably my my prediction is May 4th. I think there is you probably can find the actual date out there. I think it like there is like a full NHL event schedule, which says like when they have to have like the last day of the playoffs and like all that stuff because of the draft and free agency. Like they all have to be laid out, like outlined before the season started. So May 2nd, May 2nd. Hey, look at that. They're starting it on the Monday. I guess, yeah, because the season ends on a Friday. So they're just getting the playoffs started right away. I like that. Okay. Okay. So assuming I know the Leafs usually don't play on night one of the playoffs. So assuming they play the third one, two, I'm like doing the Leafs schedule here. One, two, three, game four will be around there. Five will be around there. Six will be there. So, I mean, if he's only out for a month, like you could have him back like late in the first round. If he's only going to be one month from today, let's say. As a possibility. And hopefully he can come back and, and if they, do, if even he doesn't, uh, the Leafs have enough depth to keep. Yeah, well, along. man, and that that was another thing too. Part of like when I was like wondering, like you know, like I wanted to come back, but like where will he fit in? Because they just like there's so many guys right now on the team that are playing well. That's like, who do you take out? Like, the, that's right. <laughs> I don't. That's fair. That's fair. Like obviously, Bunting, Matthews, Marner, you keep them. Yeah. The second line right now is Mikheyev, Tavares, Kerfoot, wow. which they're playing well. The third line is Nylander, Kemp, and Engvall. Maybe maybe that's where he goes. He maybe goes on the third line, but then it's like, who do you bump down? Because Engvall's playing great. I think you should bench Nylander, to be honest. <laughs> oh, God. So so we went from three years ago, everyone wanted to trade him, to now <laughs> to now you want to bench him. <laughs> oh, that, but, then, but then how are you going to trade him when he has no value? Because <laughs> you okay. bench him. <laughs> I'm, I'm a Habs fan, Steven. I don't have to worry about that. Well, well I'm not talking about you. <laughs> but, yeah um yeah that's uh i don't it, it is one of those things that where i've thought of like when he comes back into the lineup who who comes out of the lineup like i i don't even know who it is because comp hasn't been playing great recently but maybe that's because he's without kasha because kasha and comp were playing great before so i think he might take out wayne simmons and then and then you put kerfoot on the fourth line it would have to be and, yeah and then he could center that and make it really strong. Center well, no, Black Blackwell is the centerman there. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I'm just saying Kerfoot has more experience. Wait, Kerfoot or Kasha? Who are we talking about here? So Kerfoot would go to the fourth with Black oh. and Spezza. And oh, I would so put Cash with Nylander and Camp on the third. I mean, you, and then you your second to, you line put is Nylander out, and then put Cash in. But hey, that's who's your second line then? So you're, you're well, taking you said, Kerfoot. Oh right, you well, took Kerfoot you know, off Kerfoot, the second line. Cash is also, Cash is also good on the second. Uh, they they tried it earlier in the year. It didn't it? It was okay. I think I don't know. It's weird. It's so weird. Again, he hasn't played in a long time. I think and he when could he take out then Wayne Simmons and, and just the, the fourth line would be a bit. Yeah, more you do punchy. like. Well, that's the thing too. They have so many forwards down there that like you, you're gonna rotate and come playoff time, you're gonna wanna rotate because you wanna keep guys fresh. And Simmons is a guy too, where like 
he's getting up there in age where he can't play every game. Same thing with Spezza. He's not a guy who can play every game anymore. Like they need maintenance days, mm. especially come the playoff time where you're playing again. I mean, in that case, you're playing every shift. Like it's your last shift. The whole team is playing that way yeah. or you better be at least. So yeah, guys like Spezza and Simmons, they're definitely, they're not going to be every in the lineup every night. One of them will be in the lineup every night, but not, not uh yeah yeah you're they're not gonna play every game because especially like i know like spets is probably gonna take some bumps and even simmons like the way he the way that guy plays he he plays like with his body like very physical games so he's gonna need a lot of maintenance days come playoff too so it's a good problem to have if you're the leafs yeah um yeah i'm just i'm looking forward to it I'm I'm, uh, I'm also looking forward to it. I'm I want to see how it turns out on the yeah. Ice. You just want to see the collapse happen in, the with your own eyes. Potential collapse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there's always potential for a collapse. <laughs> this is very true. 